All right, lesson 8-1. Remember last week we went over all the formulas for volume and those were your Khan Academy. So as a review, I know it looks like a lot because there are six things in Khan Academy. Three of them are just videos and there's one of them's like five minutes, one of them's two minutes. They're really short. Um, and then three of them are assignments and each assignment is four problems. So it's, it's, even though it looks like a lot, it really is not a lot of work and it's finding volume of spheres, cones, and cylinders. We had surface area up on the board on Thursday, but we didn't really have time to work any. So we're going to get go on to surface area today. A couple of things about surface area. One is it is super, super easy to do. It just looks intimidating because the formula is long, but am I asking you to memorize all these formulas? No. So you are going to have a formula sheet and you will be able to use that formula sheet. So I don't, it, I, even though it looks like a lot, it's really not. It's just plug and chug, which means it's a radius and a height. You plug it in and you let your calculator do the work. Okay. So as long as you can remember the difference between radius and diameter, and as long as you can remember PEMDAS that you always square something before you do multiplication, that's really the hardest part of all this. And those really are not too hard concepts, but the formulas just look intimidating. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, use, I'm just going to use this front page just as a place to write the formula for surface area of a cylinder. Now in this section, we are going to cover surface area of a cylinder surface area of a cone, and surface area of a sphere. Again, three different formulas, not asking you to memorize them. So just remember to copy the formula down and then just plug in the radius and the height. That's really all there is to it, okay? For surface area of a cylinder, and I wanna write this one out first because it's really the only one that needs a little bit of explaining. The other two are a lot simpler. So let's just call, I'll just write it right here. So go ahead and write this down. Okay, surface area of a cylinder. Can anybody tell me what the difference is between, I have a top and a bottom one. Can anybody tell me what the difference is between the two, Brady? Yeah, I just flip-flopped. So is four plus three the same as three plus four? Are we good with that? So what this is, okay, and I'll kind of break it up. Think of a cylinder as a Coke can. If I was to saw off the top of a Coke can and saw off the bottom, I would have two circles. This part is area of those two circles. Okay, so that's what that is. I'll put it, I'll kind of highlight. You don't have to highlight this part. This is just me kind of showing you what I'm doing. Then if I were to take that same soda can and take 10 snips and snip it up the, you know, up the side and open it up, it would open up to a rectangle. And this is the area of that opened up rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> so notice that it doesn't matter. And the reason I the reason I wanted to take the time to show you this one is because in the book, they give it to you both ways. And I think that can be a little bit confusing because the formula, you're like, that doesn't look like the same formula. It is. It's just in one problem. They have you find the area of the, the rectangle first and then the square, the two squares. And then in the next problem, they have you find the area of the, of the square or circles first. And then they have you find the area of the rectangle. So um, that's why I kind of wanted to highlight this. Again, the hard part is just knowing what to plug in, right? In the formula where you see an R, 
you would plug in the number that they give you as the radius. And if they give you the diameter, you got to remember to cut that in half. And then where you see an H, you would just plug in the H. Okay, so if you can if you can remember diameter and radius, you can plug numbers into where they go. And then remembering PEMDAS, because in that circle part, you would want to square the R first before you do anything else. Okay, all right, so let's move on to our first example. Surface area of a, spill, of a cylinder, and that's the one that we just talked about. So it, depending on what order they have you find, I mean, you're going to find the area of the two circles, that's the top and the bottom, and then you're going to find the area of the rectangle that is when you open up the cylinder. All right, it says a contractor builds porch columns that are painted on all surfaces with a protective sealant. If the contractor has enough sealant to cover 150 square feet, can he seal all the surfaces of one column? So we need to find the surface area of one column and see if he can seal it with this sealer he has. All right, so, and I'm gonna color code this just to kind of, and I don't, this is not what you're highlighting yet, okay? So I'll kind of show you what you're highlighting. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna find the area of this top and bottom circle. And we're gonna do that by using pi r squared, now remember, that just finds the area of one, which is why right here, and I don't really love the way the book does this, they kind of jump around a lot, but that's why they multiply, oops, that's why they multiply right here by two, is because they find the area of one circle, which is the top, and then they multiply it by two, which is part of the formula, to find that top and bottom, okay? So that's why I really wanted to write the formula out on that page ago because they really don't write it out for you here. They kind of leave it in, in chunks and it makes it a little bit harder to see. Then they take the area of this right here, which is the opened up, rolled out can part. And that is this right here, which we've already talked about. Now, area of a rectangle is base times height. So to find the base, you kind of have to get even a little bit more specific. To find the base, it's 2 pi r. Okay, so to find the base, it's 2 pi r, then you would multiply it by the height. Okay, so 2 pi r h is base times height, and that gives us, now notice what they get. First of all, what do you have to know here? They give you diameter, which is the whole stretch across, and we only need half, so what's our radius equal? One. So then what they do is they find the area of just the top circle. So they plug, for n for r, they plug a 1, and n for pi, they plug 3.14. And when you square 1, it's still 1. And when you take 3.14 times 1, it's 3.14. So the area of just the top circle is 3.14, right? That's the area of this part right here. But what they do is they have to, you have to multiply that times 2 because you want the area of the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's where this 2 times 3.14 comes in right here, okay? Then they plug what, they're, what you're given, right? Again, don't overthink it. Just use the, use the equation or the formula and just plug in. It's 2 pi rh. We know that r is 1, okay? So that's where they get the 1 right here. They, they're plugging in the r. And then the height, well, the height is 14. And the way, the reason we know that the height is 14, the height of our column is 14. So when I snip it open and enroll it, the height is still going to be 14. Okay. So that's where they got the 14. And again, um, we touched on this. I think somebody asked me this on their jump start. You'll notice in the book, they always do this. And it's a good, it is a very good habit to get into because it will help you to know when to stop when they're asking for the exact answer and when they're asking for a rounded answer, okay? And what I mean by that is, notice what they do first. They multiply all the numbers together first. They, they kind of ignore pi for a second and they do two times one times 14. And that's where they get the 28. And then they just drop the pi down, right? So 28 pi is the exact but then the, the, if you take 28 times 3.14, that's where you get this ish, right? This about, it's, it's estimated, it's roughly, it's rounded, okay? So now we have, right here, right? We have, let me keep my highlighter colors the same. 
we have the area of the square part or the rectangle part here. And we have the area of the circle part times two that takes care of the top and the bottom. And if we add all that up together, we get this final answer here of 94.2 square or feet squared. So let's go back to our original question. Could the contractor seal one column if he has a, enough sealant to cover 150 square feet and one column is only 94 square feet? Can he? Does he have enough to cover one column? Yes. Could he cover two columns? No, because two columns would be like 188 square feet. So that'd be a little too much, but he does have enough to cover one column. Okay. All right. So when you are asked to find surface area of a column, okay, or a cylinder, just use this formula. And it doesn't matter if you do the square part first or the circles first, but you use this formula, plug in the R, plug in the H. That's it, okay? Remember to square R first and you're good. <clears throat> Notice on this problem, and I'm gonna say this because we're gonna, we're gonna kind of uh, compare it here in a second to a different little bit of instructions. Notice in this part, <coughs> because we needed to compare it to 150 square feet, we could not leave everything pi. Does that make sense? Because I was comparing it to 150 square feet. If my answer had been, what's nine, that'd be about 80, so it'd be like 80 or 96 point something. If I was to just add up all the numbers and not take everything times 3.14, my answer would be something around the, the, the let's see. I don't want to try to guess because that would be... Uh, Yeah, one pi. So if I was to have, if I was to leave this one in terms of pi, I would have one pi. And if I was to leave this one in terms of pi, I would have 28 pi. Does everybody see that? Well, if I add one pi and 28 pi, that gives me 29 pi. Can I tell you that 29 pi is less or greater than 150 square feet? No, because having that pi in there, even though it is an actual number, it's real, it's a number, it doesn't really help me in the real world, right? I can't go into the store and say, I need enough paint to cover 29 pi. Those people would look at me like I was crazy. I would need to say, I need enough paint to cover 150 square feet. And then they would tell me how much paint I needed. So in real world application, that's why they went ahead and multiplied everything out. And they added everything up to this 94.2 because we needed real world numbers to compare to real world numbers, okay? The, re the real world doesn't work in terms of pi. So that's why we did it this way on, on this problem. Now on this try it, this is not a story problem. We're not trying to figure out if we have enough paint to cover something. So I'll show you the difference and kind of where they end the answer. So first of all, here's your formula, okay? So with your highlighter, this is kind of the first thing I really want you to highlight for sure. Here's your formula. Okay, so I lied. I guess they do really state it for you. They just put it down further in the problem or further on the page. That's your formula for surface area of a cylinder. <clears throat> Notice what we need to know. We need to know the R, the R, and the H. So this is going to be an R, this is going to be an R, and this is going to be an H. Okay, so, and here's my problem. What is the surface area of a cylinder with a height of 9.5 inches and a radius of 2.5 inches? So what am I going to put in this first box? Right here. What am I going to put there? 2.5, because that's asking for the radius, right? In the formula, 2 pi times r squared, and the r here is 2.5. How about in this other r? 2.5, good. And the height? 9.5. Okay, now here's where I said the other hard part, and I use, I use the word hard very loosely here because it's not a hard part, but it can be challenging. And I will tell you this morning when I worked one of these problems for the first time, I made this mistake. It's very easy to do, but it's not 2.5 times two, okay? It is 2.5 squared, which means in your calculator, you're either gonna use your squared button or you can just punch in 2.5 times 2.5, okay? The other thing is, notice that they are multiplying all the numbers 
But for right now, they're leaving pi alone and they're just leaving pi there. So in your calculator, I want everybody to do it. And if you don't have a calculator in your hand, you can guarantee I'm gonna call on you, okay? 2.5 squared or 2.5 times 2.5 times two. And that's this leading two right here, okay? 2.5 squared times two. Micah, 12.5. Can I get a second? All right. Now, again, notice it's 12.5 pi because I haven't messed with that pi yet. I'm just leaving it as pi for now. Okay, and that's going to always be your best bet. Leave it pi until you can't leave it pi any longer, okay? Now, let's go over to this one. Again, leave pi alone, right? Notice pi stays pi down here. And just multiply all your numbers. And there's nothing to square in this one. So it doesn't matter what order you do it. Just multiply all your numbers. 2 times 2.5 times 9.5. We're skipping over pi. Somebody that hasn't answered yet. Casey? What is it? Okay, do I get a second? I like it. All right, 47.5. All right, now, this is kind of the cool part about adding these two numbers together. Anytime you have a matching variable or a matching math symbol of any kind, it's like saying 12.5 apples plus 47.5 apples. It's just adding apples and apples. Or if you want to get really particular here, instead of the symbol pie, we could say apple pies, right? If I have 12 and a half pies and I add 47 and a half pies to that, how many pies do I have all together? Because the pies match, I can just add them together as like terms. So what is 12.5 plus 47.5? Somebody that hasn't answered yet today. Eli? 60. Get a second? All right. Now, notice there is no next box. There is nothing that says about or estimated or rounded, right? This is the exact answer because pi is a number. That is a number. Now, I couldn't go to the store and say I need enough flooring to cover 60 pi. They'd look at me like I was crazy, but that is a number. <clears throat> so because there's no further directions or box or asking to estimate it, and I don't need to compare it to a real world number for a story problem, I just leave my answer as 60 pi because that's exact. <clears throat> and I think on your Savvis ones, it's very, I, well, I know it is. I worked through them all this morning. It's very specific. And in the, in the answer box, it will say round to the nearest whatever. If they want you to round it, they're going to tell you what to round it to. Okay. All right. Find the surface area of a cone. <clears throat> All right, this, this is the one where they don't ever get specific. So you're gonna highlight two separate things, okay? So get your highlighters ready. You're gonna highlight the area of a circle, okay? And that's this right here. Because think of a cone, right? That's this right here. Plus, plus the area of this unfolded cone right here, and that's this part right here, surface area. <laughs> so again, think about if you were to take this ice cream cone thingy and you take the circle top off and you snip this little cone and you open it up, it's gonna open up to this, it almost looks like a pizza slice, but that's what it would open up to. So they don't actually write it all out as one formula, but it's the area of the circle plus the area of the cone shape added together. And we know the area of a circle, we've already done this, is pi r squared. So that's the first formula you would use. And again, you would plug in radius, and that's what they've done here, right? Here's your radius. They plugged radius in here. And it's not times two, it's times itself twice, right? So 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25 pi. And now you can leave it there for a, well, nope, you can't leave it there. How come? And this is, don't do this. Don't do what I just did. I didn't read the whole directions. A manufacturer packages an ice cream cone in paper. How much paper is needed to package one ice cream cone? Here's what I didn't read. And don't do this. Don't be me. Use 3.14 for pi. Okay. They tell you to use 3.14 for pi. Your Savvis tells you to either use 3.14 or 22 over 7. Okay. Or leave it exact. Leaving it exact would be here. Multiplying that, not like two, two, 2.25 times 
22 over seven or multiplying 2.25 times 3.14. Both of those are valid uh, replacements for pi, okay? 3.14 or 22 over seven. Use whichever one they tell you to use, yeah. Mm -mm. Um, Friday. Okay, so <clears throat> because it said to use 3.15 for pi, what we did here is when we got to this step, we actually in our calculator took three times or 2.25 times 3.14. Okay, and that's how we got this number. That is the area of the circle top. Now we're going to come over here. The area equals pi r l. And they tell you right here that the slant is the l. So right here, here's the slant. Okay. <clears throat> and again, it's just plugging in what they tell you. The radius, the slant height. Multiply the two numbers together first. Always do that. Nothing to square, so you don't even have to worry about that. 9 pi. And again, because they tell you to use... 3.14, we're going to in place a pi, we're going to put this in our calculator. Now, notice what you've got. You've got the area of the circle right here, and you've got the area of the cone part right here, and you add those two together, and you get the surface area of the whole 3D image, okay? All right, last one. This one is even easier, I think, because there's nothing to add together. It's just simply the surface area of a sphere. Now, I don't do this very often, but I'm going to have you guys take your pencils, and I'm going to have you X this out, okay? <clears throat> what this is is the big, massy, underneath side of how they figured out the formula for area of a sphere. And if you love math and you want to look at that, great, it's interesting. But the important part is all of that math came up with this formula right here. So really what I want you to highlight is the actual formula. And they got it, like I said, all of this fancy math right here, all of this just gave you this formula. And that's all that's important is that you know this formula. So highlight that so that you can easily find it. Okay, and again, I think surface area of a sphere is easiest because you don't even have to add two different parts together. It's just simply one formula and it's four pi r squared. And again, let's pay attention here. They tell us to use 3.14 for pi, okay? So do it in steps. It's, if you do this in order, I promise you it never gets harder than this. The radius is six, plug it in. Square six, because we always do exponents first. Then multiply all your numbers. Leave pi alone for right now. Leave pi alone. And just simply multiply four times 36 to get 144. And then because the directions tell us to use 3.14 for pi, now is where we're actually going to put this in our calculator. And that's going to give us our final answer, which is right here. And notice it's inches squared because four does not come with inches. Pi doesn't come with inches. The radius is the only thing that came with inches. Right, Dayton? You got that highlighted? I'm going to come around and check. I better see everything I've got on here on your paper. It's radius squared. It's six inches times six inches. That's where you get the inch and the inch. That's where you get two. And that's why it's inches squared. Okay? All right. And again, this is, you know, can James, if you read the actual problem, James is making a model of the earth. He has enough blue paint to cover 500 inches squared. Can he paint the sphere of his earth model here? If he's got enough to cover 500 inches and his model is 452, does he have enough paint to cover it? Yes, he does. Okay. Um, and I, I really, I don't know if they have this. I guess I should look. <clears throat> Here's under this generalize right here. Okay, if you want to highlight it in the second place, there's your formula. Do they have that on the other one? I don't think they do. They never really actually write out the whole formula for the cone, but just remember that it is this plus this. Okay, and if you want to write it out, it would be surface area equals pi r squared plus pi r l. 
Okay, that's it. That, that's that's both parts just written together as one. Okay. All right. The last thing I want to do is a, is a problem. You will have one just like this on your homework. Okay. So if everybody could turn to page ten, nope, number ten on page four thirty seven. There is one exactly like this. It even is the theme park has a ride. Like it's literally exactly like this with just a different number. So if you do this, you will have you will be able to just plug your new number from your homework into the formula and you'll be able to get this one easy peasy. Okay. All right. It says a theme park has a ride that is located in half of a sphere. Okay. The ride goes around the widest part of the sphere which has a circumference of 514.96 yards. What is the surface area of the sphere? Estimate to the nearest hundredth and use 3.14 for pi. So a couple bits of information there. We're gonna be estimating, so we're not leaving it with pi. We're gonna use 3.14 in terms of pi. Now, it's a surface area of the sphere, okay? That's what we're looking for. What is the formula for surface area of a sphere? My Micah? That's all right. You will. You you. Everybody has it. What is it? Go back to page. This is why we highlighted it. Surface area of a sphere was on page four thirty five. What is it, Maddie? Four pi r. Okay, four pi r squared. Right. Four is a number. Pi is a number. We need an r, and we're going to square that r. Are we given the r? No. We got to find our own r. So everybody needs to write this formula down because you will have to have this to do it on your homework, okay? Circumference equals two, whoops, two pi r. Okay, circumference means the distance around a circle, okay? If I was to draw a circle on the floor and I'd say walk the circumference, it's how far you would walk to walk around the outside of the circle, okay? Now, they give us the circumference. So we could plug that in for the C right? Because that's the actual answer to the circumference problem. So we would have 514.96 equals 2 pi r. We don't know r. We need to know r. But they tell us to use 3.14 for pi. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 3.14 in for pi, okay? That's the first thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to multiply the numbers. So let's leave this alone for now and multiply 2 times 3.14, and it is 6.28. I want to solve for R because I need to know the radius. How would I solve for R? Oh, I love it. Uh, Olivia, by what? Good. Divide both sides by 6.28. And the reason I do that is because 6.28 and 6.28 reduce to a one or quote, go away, leaving the R. And then somebody tell me what 514.96 divided by 6.28 is. I'm gonna try to get somebody that hasn't answered yet. Who has, who's been too quiet today? Aiden, what do you get? 514.96 divided by 6.28. Yep. It's right up there on the board. I like it. You guys are on it. So I know that my radius is 82 yards, right? Okay. I know my radius is 82 yards. So I'm going to go up here to my formula. Here's my formula here. And I'm going to take surface area equals 4 pi. But now I know my R. My R, I had to find it myself, but it's 82 square. Don't forget, square 82. This is, remember when I said earlier today I made a mistake? The very first time I worked this problem, I got the wrong answer because I took 82 times 2. It's easy to do, but remember that 82 squared is 82 times 82 times 4. Do your numbers first. So 4 times, what's 82 squared? 82 times 82 times 4 equals, it's a really big number, but that's okay. 2, 6, 8, I like it. Thank you, 9, 6, pi. 
Now, I am doing a real world problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and not only that, but it tells me right here, estimate to the nearest hundredth using 3.14 for pi. So in my calculator, in place of pi, I'm going to take all of this and I'm just going to multiply times 3.14. And we should get, somebody second this because I punched it in kind of quick. Like it? Okay, now here's where I want you to pay attention. We are finding the sphere of this ride. The very first sentence, what does it tell us about this ride in the sphere? It's half. So, Jason Elliott reports to the office. Jason Elliott to the office. Because it's half the sphere, we actually need to divide this big number by two to get the answer to the story problem. Story problems can be a little tricky sometimes. And this is what your final answer would be. <clears throat> so the only one on all of your homework the only one where they don't give you the radius and they kind of make your work for it a little bit is the one in your homework I think it's number three I think number three or number four and it's worded it literally starts out a theme park has a ride so it's just like this so as long as you have all of this you'll be good. And just remember that step one, if it helps you to put it here, right? Step one right here. Step one was to find your own radius using this formula. You might want to highlight this formula. Circumference equals two pi r. You're going to have to work for your own radius to be able to plug it into the surface area formula. Other than that, all the rest of them, they give you the radius, the height, they give you everything you need. So this is the only one that's a little bit more challenging. All right, if you will notice on our Canvas homepage, um, it says your homework is the 8.1 or the 8-1 Savas. It is shortened. I shortened it down to six problems. And it does say you have to turn in your work because obviously you can see each one of these requires quite a bit of work. So you will have to turn in your work paper to get the credit, okay? All right, for those of you at home, email me if you have any questions.